Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. We'll start with our scripture, scripture reading. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born. And the night in which it was said, There is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness cease upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the month. I have read to you from the book of Job, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down heads, thanking you for forgiving us of our sins. Thanking and praising you, God, because you're an awesome God. You, you can do anything but fail. And we just want to thank you, Father, for life, health, and strength. We thank you that you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Thank you that you saw to it that we made it safely to the house of prayer to once again learn more about you and your will. We just want to thank you, Father, because without you, we could do absolutely nothing. And as we go through your word today, we ask that you stir up the spirit within us. Allow us to have open minds and a heart to want to learn more about you. In your son Jesus' name, we give you the praise and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, we will call Deacon Mike up to share the Sunday school lesson with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Nice, cool, crisp day out there. Who am I kidding? It's cold. <laughs> it's cool, it's cold. <laughs> oh, man. We had a, this is a second, uh, this is the second um, lesson in this particular uh, uh, quarter. And it's in the Acts of the Apostles, and at least that's what it says here, but as a good friend of mine used to say, he used to say, this is the acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. So, uh, today's lesson is Faith to Discern. And it's, it's with, uh, it's Acts, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Um, the, t the place is the Syrian, is Antioch in Syria. There's another Antioch, but that's not uh, that's not this is to, this is to be more or less differentiated from the other Syria. This is the, the, the other Antioch. This is the Antioch in Syria. The time is 47, 48 A.D. And today's uh, lesson's aim is to get a grasp of the geographical area covered by Paul and Barnabas. Notice it's Paul and Barnabas right now. Before when you start, it's Barnabas and Paul. And to understand the hardships they encountered as they traveled. The principle is to recognize that there were always there will always be opposition to the preaching of the gospel. And the thought about that is if there is no opposition, you may not be teaching it correctly. Because the enemy will try to come and steal no matter what. Amen. The application is to learn. This is what we have to do at all times. To learn from the example of Paul and Barnabas, how to serve the Lord in missions. Now, there's also another thing in here that I that I, that I learned that I learned when you're not being again when you're not being challenged by the enemy, 
you're not effective as you should be. So, with that, let us do as we always do by uh, reading the scriptures. And even though I uh, threatened to have uh, somebody read five scriptures yesterday, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say, sister? He's worried about feelings now. <laughs> no, not really. No. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to start out with uh, um, Sister Kate. Can you read for me the first one? Oh, wait, before we go any further, I looked at this thing and I was thinking so I actually had to grab um, something to help me with these names. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. You yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh, where did this come from? Now, some of them are I, some of them I, 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 you know, I can, you can figure it out. Uh, but it's like, this, this is not like John or Joe or Fred right, or something right, like that. Right. These are names that I'm never going to probably see again until, until I pick up my Bible again. But I'm going to take that thing for now. <laughs> now, there's, um, there's, they're talking about, okay, we know Saul and Barnabas, we're uh -huh. two. And another strange name, well, not so much strange, was, Lucius. Now I know of her, and I know of someone by the name of Lucius, so does it that's not strange to me. Manaean, I could not figure that one out. I think I said I have never heard that one. So that's one I wanted to hit. Manaean. That's how you pronounce his name. Cyrene, Cyrene, or Cyrene or Cyrene, I don't even know how it is, to be honest. <laughs> Simeon, there's another one. I listened and I'm like this, I couldn't remember it. But anyway, those, those are names that were really uh, uh, tough for me to pronounce. And then there's another one further on down uh, when they said uh, um, Elimus, El Elimus, uh, Elimus, Elimus, the sorcerer. Okay, now, if you can't say it, don't worry. We all have problems with saying certain things when we're reading it, so don't worry. Go ahead, Sister Katie. Go right ahead. We're here to help you, sweetie. And there was in the church that, at, that was at, at Antioch, Antioch there's prophet and teaching as Barnabas. Bottom, Barnabas? Barnabas is Samson. Simeon. Simeon. That was called Niger. 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 Uh, Cyrene. Cyrene. And uh, man, man, Manan. Manan, which had been brought up with her Her oldest. Herod. 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 Herod, Herod the, the teacher. The tea The tea And Samson. And Saul. So. Saul, so, I mean. Amen. Amen. These days are a little difficult sometimes. Yeah. So don't feel bad. You saw you heard me up there stumbling. All right, let's move on. Let's go. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Sister Hardy, can you go with number two, please, for us? Barnabas. Barnabas. And Sal, for the word word there unto I have called them. Okay. Okay. Um Sister Sister Christine. Can you read for me number three? And and uh, Sister Brenda, could you hit four for me, please?
thalamus. Thalamus, they preach the word of God. And that's at the sacrilege? Synagogues. Synagogues of Jews. And they had also found with them ministry. All right, all right. To their ministry. All right. Um, Brother Morris, can you read for me six and seven? Yes. And when they had gone through the aisles onto Papas, through the aisles onto Papas, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Barhesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius. Paul is a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. All right. Sister Ward, can you read for me nine, uh, excuse me, eight and nine, please? But Alida, the sorcerer for his is his name, by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the duty from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Anne, Sister, Sister Anne. Sister Anne, can you read number 10 for me, please? Last two, please. And now be sure with the hand of the Lord upon you. And thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun or season. And immediately there fell upon him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some or some to. treacherous there. <laughs> um, as we said earlier, uh, I'm just going to read this one portion of the, uh, of the introduction. The sermon has always been a, a necessary part of ministry, largely because our enemy, the devil, will do anything deceptive he can think of to derail the effective spreading of the gospel. Interesting, back then it was persecution, persecution, persecution. Look what it is now. It's back to persecution in some places. But other places, like the United States here, it's not so much persecution. It's all relaxed. Oh, we'll leave them alone. We'll leave them alone. So we are not as sharp as what we should be. Because if we were as sharp as we should be, he would, he would not bother us because he would be fearing us because we are heavily armed. We are heavily armed, and we just have not learned how to use our weapons well. Now, because of that, he's left, left us alone, and so we've gotten lazy, we've gotten stale. Okay? So anyway, Satan tries to water down the teachings of Scripture in such a way that people are misled about its truths. That's happening today. We see that right now. That with uh, certain other people... Uh, certain other uh, uh, um, celebrities, there's more than one way to get to heaven. When Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the way. The way. He didn't say I am a way. He said I am the way. As in there is nothing else. And we have certain celebrities who try to water that down and they try to act like they believe that they are Christian when they deny what the Lord Jesus said. Said. Okay. Now, the only way to avoid, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a well-known politician was asked on a national news program if there is only one way to heaven, namely through belief in Jesus Christ and his accomplished 
finished work on the cross. His answer was immediate and direct, affirming that Jesus himself, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? So, it's known, it is known that he is the way. Now, let's get, let's get into the lesson. Today's lesson is broken into two parts. The first part was the expanded ministry. Uh, expanded ministry is covered in, in, in uh, verses 1 through 5. And uh, so let's uh, get into that right this very moment. Okay. Verse 1. Now there were, uh, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manahan, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Now, uh, going, we're looking at that, we're looking at that first verse, and the things that I see in that first verse, there were, first of all, there were five, there were five people mentioned, five people mentioned in this particular scripture that were, quote, prophets and teachers, okay? Uh, they were prophets and teachers basically because of their knowledge of the scripture, their, their application in their lives of the scripture, their, their ability to teach and to uh, help the congregation. So what gets to me in this one, by looking at this, I see there was a couple of Jews. And I'm looking at this one guy by the name of Simeon that was called Niger. Because, why? Because he was of a dark complexion. He was of a dark complexion. He was black. Man. OK? Because that's what the word Niger comes from um, uh, the, night, the word, I think it's Latin, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's Latin that it's, uh, it means black. And so that's why he was called Niger. And Lucius of Cyrene, now I don't know exactly where Cyrene is, but it's not in Jerusalem, put it that way. And all these people came from different stations in life. For instance, Manaean. It says in here, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. In other words, he was, um, if you go back, oh goodness, I forget which where it was. But if you go back into the, uh, uh, back into the early part of Acts, it tells you where, where, the, where, where, the, where the connection was. His, his, uh, he, he was more or less brought up with, he was nursed with Herod the Tetrarch when Herod was, uh, when Herod was a child. Anyway, uh, so we got people from different stations in life who are who have become pretty well skilled in the, in the, in the uh, through the Holy Ghost, obviously, pretty well skilled in the Word, and so that's that was what I gathered in this particular verse that they're gathering from all areas in which they were local. Now, because the church was being persecuted. When people get persecuted, they run. And it's no different. They, 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 they fled Jerusalem and they went to different, other, they went to different areas in the, of, the, of the world. And what happened? They started evangelizing there. So that's where the, 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 uh, the persecution by Satan backfired on him. And it's going to continue to backfire on him. All right, number two, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is the one that is the teacher, okay? He is the one that is being, he is sending out these people these two guys, well, Barnabas and Paul, he said, separate them out. We, they, they, they have a special, they have a special task that I have for them. They have a different ministry. So, Paul and Barnabas were called, and three, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, this is the congregation now, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away, gave them their blessing, placed hands on them. 
more or less, remember back in the Old Testament times when, uh, the, when, when the patriarch used to place his hands on his, on his son and give him a blessing? That's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of the, uh, reminds me of the congregation giving him a blessing. And of course, giving, giving him their say, yes, please go do as the Lord tells you to do with our blessing. And to be honest, um, I think that's something that, and that's something that I'm going to remember for the simple fact that when I went one place, when I was at one other place, and then I left, I was there for a season. I was there for a season, and I'm here because I was, I was basically, uh, how should we say, I didn't see, I didn't hear a calling on my life. However, I was still seeking, right, I was still seeking. I was still seeking to learn more and get a better uh, relationship with the Lord. And I came here, and I am not, I am not mad. <laughs> I am not mad. So I'm very happy I'm here, and uh, I, I, and I did get the blessing of my former pastor. So I feel good about that. If you, if I just, I just feel good about that. I got the blessing of my, of my former pastor to come here. So anyway, they gave them their blessing and sent Barnabas and Paul on their way. Four. So they departed, sent forth by the Holy Ghost. They departed. They had no idea where they were going at the time, it looked like. But they departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Okay. Um, Cyprus was, uh, was more or less the home, I, the, the more or less the home for uh, home for Barnabas. So he was familiar with that area. So now he's going to help out his, his, own, his own people. He's going to spread the gospel to his own people. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. Now, two things. If you remember reading all, all other areas in which Paul was, was, was involved, what did he do? He went to the synagogues and he taught. He taught. He taught Christ and Christ crucified and rose again in the synagogues and he reasoned with them from the scriptures that they had already known that yes, indeed, this guy right here, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, was the Messiah. But he was the Messiah and he was a suffering Messiah. But anyway, um, That was that was Paul's mo when he went to a new when he went to a new uh, synagogue when he went to a new not synagogue when he went to a new a new place he would teach in the synagogue because that was a gathering place that's a gathering place. all right now and they also had John to their ministry now John is it says John in here it says John Mark and John Mark actually happens to be the the guy who penned the Gospel of Mark. And I thought it was John at first, but it was Mark. So, so uh, at least that's what I—that's what—that's what my research found out that it was Mark. So now the now the first part of this was the expanded ministry. Now they are going off to all all parts of the of the known world to preach the gospel. Now along this, um, along with this, you can sit there and say, uh, and in the in the. In the expositor, it says right here, we must emphasize that this entire process, gathering of the separating uh, Paul and Barnabas away, <coughs> was at the direction of the Holy Ghost. Only a work of the Holy Spirit would lead a church to willingly give up their two most prominent, prominent leaders for another ministry. Now I was thinking and said, "Wow, that's a that's a serious sacrifice to give up two people who were your superstars, I guess you could say, to 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 further the gospel." But the prize was to further the gospel. The prize wasn't just for this church to get fat. It was to it was to uh, spread the word, just like Jesus said in in Matthew, "Go forth and teach." Okay. So anyway, that's what the expanded ministry was. The expanded ministry was that the Holy Ghost said, okay, now it's time to 
separate these two out and send them out because my word has to go forth. Okay? So, um, I know that was kind of like a, a quick go through that, that portion, but uh, if there's anything anyone else wants to add or has a question, or, or maybe uh, I'm obvious that I may have missed a few things, so if so, please bring them up now. Anyone? You know, Sister Brenda? I like having lessons start off more than small. That uh, God said, go. That's gospel. Mm -hmm. you know, and only he gave gifts. And, and you see, let me know. You see, the church, everywhere there was a church, God had a specific gift he gave to each one. But some people got several. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that we get so dependent, say, like now you're teaching. Think, oh, that's what I want to do. I like, but God can come and change that and give you another gift besides that. But when He tells you something, like He told these prophets, you've been teaching, but now I got something else for you to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go into a meeting and you're wondering, I, I know a lot of board meetings I'd be on, and I asked one minister why they put me on it, and he said, because you're a prayer warrior. You need to be praying. Why everybody is yakking and praying on you. You need to be praying. You always should have someone on the wall praying. Yeah, yeah right. And so it showed us, uh, you know, when I looked at this, it says that it came a time people thought they'd be doing things to hurt you, but when they came at the Christian, they only were spreading the gospel. Right. So, yeah, you think you're running me, but God got a plan. Yeah, and all I got to remember is that he's with me. Yes. And that's what Paul is. And so when he gives you a gift, it might seem strange to someone else, but you see how they obey and what happened. So these messages are helping us to know that, that he gave us something that will be with us, that they guide us, and that was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that Holy Spirit is saying, it'll direct you, it'll teach you. Mm -hmm. So all of this is saying that in this lesson, let us know that he didn't leave us alone. He showed us to using these disciples here that he's going to do different things with different ones and when he do it he wants you to obey right. you might not know what it all is you like to say you might not pronounce the word but get up there he wants you to tell them about him it ain't about that name it ain't about but if you, you pronounce it full as you can but expand the gospel the gospel is not in that name the name is Jesus. You can say that. That's, what the That's all we want to know. All right, thanks, Lord. Well, you know, I, what, what you were saying made me think about, you know, about the teachers. You notice that there were five teachers for that one particular church. Now, uh, from what I was reading, Antioch was not a small town. It was not a small town. It was a pretty big place. So they had teachers all over. They had places there that they had churches just like this city. They may have had a, a, a church over here, and then on the other side of the city, they may, have a, they may have another one over there, or wherever. And so, these five were sent away. Now, excuse me, these two were sent away, so they still had three. <laughs> they still had three. So, uh, I, I thought it was uh, interesting that uh, God's, well, I'm, I'm going to say this, maybe it was, maybe it was, but it just turned out to be. I think God sent his best forth out in the, in the, in the world. And specifically when you think about it, because how many letters did Paul write? He wrote much of the, of, of the New Testament by his knowledge of the Old Testament and the revelation that he received when he was um, in Arabia. So, uh, anyone else have anything to say? Yes, yes, um, Sister Francis. I just wanted to say, again, too, when you look at that first verse, and we see all these gifted men, prophets and teachers, and, and God had a plan. You know, they were starting out spreading the gospel because that's what Jesus had said, right. that he wanted them to spread the gospel. And uh, when I looked at my expositor, uh, when it speaks of these gifted men, it says by this time, Christianity had spread beyond the boundaries of Palestine, but there was no planned ministry outreach beyond that. But then now we see that it says God decided it was time to begin fulfilling the commission. Mm -hmm. And so they went on and they were in Antioch. And I found a scripture I'd like to share 
coming out of Ephesians. Okay. Chapter 4. Verse 11 and 12. Okay. It says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And this is talking about the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then we see right here, as you brought it out so beautifully, the Holy Ghost. This congregation was busy fasting and praying. And the Holy Ghost entered in and spoke and gave them the direction. And like you said, he told them, set apart, separate Barnabas and Saul and send them out. And, you know, when you think about the fact that in our own human minds, if we got all that goodness and greatness among us, our instinct would be to hold on to yes, it. Yes, yes. Don't let them go. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, but they fasted and they prayed for direction and willingly sent them forth so that they could spread the gospel. And that's so beautiful how we need to know that the Holy Ghost should always be our guide, you know, and not get caught up letting man put us somewhere or letting man send us somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, man saying, oh, I, I see something in you. Uh, and maybe he does, mm -hmm. but we have to let the Holy Spirit lead us. Well, you know, I was reading, um, I was reading uh, something the other day, yesterday, or was it today? I can't remember. Um, what I, was, I can't remember what I was talking about, listening to the voice of God. And it was about, um, it was about uh, Eli. It was about Eli, uh, um, oh, excuse me. I can't think of his name. Samuel. That, thank you, thank you, thank you. Samuel was, was being called by God at night, but he thought it was Eli. And it took three times for Eli to, to figure out, said, if when you hear that again, speak, say, yes, Lord, I am here. That's right. right. And the thing about it is, uh, um, these people, they recognize it right off the bat. They recognize it right off the bat. Why? I believe because they were fasting and praying and seeking out his, seeking out his, uh, his direction. But uh, two things. Number one, they were obedient. They were obedient. And the other thing is, Notice that the, 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 to the two uh, the two evangelists, they didn't know where they were going. <laughs> they did They were not told where to go. And at least put it this way: we were not seen here. It's not reported to us that they were told where to go. So I, I thought that was something that, to me, I, I want to know where I'm going at all times. Yeah, yeah I want to know. Yeah, but see, it's kind of tough for me. But it's something I'm learning. It's something I'm learning. But I, I just want to say something to what you said. It's the faith. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go right ahead. Yeah, it, it's the faith, mm -hmm. the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Right, And right. just the fact that they were sent forth by the Holy Spirit. Yes. See, and that's what's got to happen for us. We might be sent to many places without knowing where we're going. Mm -hmm. But if we're led by the Holy Spirit, will end up in the right place. Right, right. Right, anybody else? Sister Brenda? Yeah, they was found doing what the Lord wants. You got to be found seeking the Lord. Right, right. If you want to be used, you got to be found seeking Him. You won't know Him unless you seek Him. And that's why, if you don't get into your word, you won't know how to discern. And our lesson is the talking about mm -hmm. they, they already knew they discern because they had a relationship. Right, right. Well, that's what it is. You got. That's what it is. If you get a relationship, like for instance, if you get a relationship with your with your wife or husband, whatever. Uh, um, say you've been with your uh, wife or husband for say maybe 15, 20, maybe 30 years. You know, yeah. 
somebody comes up, I'm just going to say this, somebody comes up to you and they say something and you already know, if you bring that up to your wife, that you know what she's going to say. Because you've been with her so long, it's, it's, it's more or less you have a seriously strong relationship, a strong bond. So you know. So the same thing goes with, the same thing as you said, as you pointed out. Once we get that strong relationship with the Lord, we'll know. We'll know. Anybody else before we go on? Nothing? Okay. Second portion of the is the intense conflict. Now this is uh, something that uh, was kind of kind of difficult at first, but it's one of those things for me for me to understand at first. But when I read it the second and third time, I really got I got a lot more out of it. Chapter uh, excuse me, uh, verse six. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Now, the name Bar Jesus, um, don't get it, don't get it confused, don't get it confused. Bar Jesus means son of Jesus, and is not son of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. The Jesus here is the the, the name Jesus was basically uh, uh, um, the Greek version of the name. Yahshua, Yahshua, and Brother Lawrence, you said something earlier when you were reading. Okay. You said something, and you said Bar. You, you said it, Bar. You said you didn't use the J, and there was no J back then. So you said it the way you said it. I was thinking, I said, oh my, he must have researched that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, it's 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 a uh, son of jo uh, Joshua, a son of Yahshua. But anyway. Anyway, where was it? Okay, a false prophet whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country of Sergius Paulus, a prudent man. Now, um, I read in I read in my um, amplified I read in my amplified about that prudent man. He was one of I guess he was a, a ruler or something. Mm -hmm. And in the in the, in the, the uh, uh, scripture according to the it's the, to, according to the uh, Amplified, I'm going to read that same verse, verse number 7. Okay, and it was talking about, talking about, the, uh, uh, talking about uh, the false, pro that false prophet, the Jew. He was closely associated with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent and sensible man of sound understanding. He summoned to him Barnabas and Saul, and sought to hear the word of God concerning salvation in the kingdom of God attained through Christ. Now, that's that that's basically what the same thing that we have here. However, they said it says here instead of saying a prudent man, it said it said an intelligent and sensible man of sound understanding. Sound understanding. So he knows. He, he can recognize what's, he can recognize certain things, okay? So, but Il, Il, Elimus, the sorcerer, now, when they changed names on me, kind of like, who is this? And I had to back up. <laughs> I had to back up, so I said, wait a minute, who is this? I don't remember seeing this. And it says, oh, but Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's still talking about, it's still talking about, uh, uh, um, Jesus. Bar Jesus. They're still talking about Bar Jesus. So, uh, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, why would they want to do something like that? Why would you want to withhold something good from someone? Why would you want to withhold the truth of someone? And it reminded me of um, when they tried, when they were going to uh, crucify Jesus, and they had a council, and they were saying. Uh, people will follow him instead of us. Well, in other words, you're, well, you're afraid of losing your job, you're afraid of losing your, your, your prestige. That's yes. what it was. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> he was afraid of not having his job, of having, have, being, the, being the close to the ear of the proconsul. Okay. Okay, I'll read that eight again. But elements the sorcerer for so is his name by interpretation, but stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who was called Paul, okay, that was no mystery to me, who, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, 
And I'm wondering what kind of a stare that was. I'm what I, I don't do want to say, what kind of a stare was that? I don't know what that cold, cold, it wasn't a death stare because the guy didn't die or anything, but he must have been filled with some righteous rage at the time when he was there. And said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? That's scary. To me, that's scary. Son of the devil? He didn't say son of... He, he just said son of the devil. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? I, I can imagine him not saying it, but shouting it, yelling it. Because I know how I am when I get a little... When I get a little uh, upset, I get a little increased volume in everything. So I can imagine what, 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 uh, what he had done, what, what, what he was going through. Further, and, level. and now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now, isn't that a little bit familiar? Isn't that a little bit familiar? Isn't that something what somebody else went through? Somebody else went through that, and then uh, 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 Saul went through that when he when when uh, when he was on his way to Damascus to uh, to to arrest some more some more uh, Jewish Christians, and for for his and our sake, he was not killed. He was not he was not uh, uh, um, blown away as I, as, I, as as it said. He wasn't killed or anything. What was he was afflicted with the same? He was afflicted with blindness. And the the part that gets to me is we don't hear anything else about this guy. Mm -hmm. But the only thing we can do is hope and pray mm -hmm. that he actually turned his his life around because it was a um, that was a strong rebuke. That was a very strong rebuke. Okay, uh, and immediately there fell upon him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, wow, can you imagine, can you imagine being a witness to all of this? Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, I read the same portion from the, from the, from the uh, Amplified. I'm going to read uh, uh, 10, any, 10, 11, and 12 from the Amplified. Okay, now, Saul, you master, and he said, you master in every form of deception. Deception. That's part of, that's part of the, what the devil does. Except in recklessness, unscrupulousness, and wickedness, you son of the devil, you enemy of everything that is upright and good. Will you never stop perverting and making crooked the straight paths of the Lord. The straight paths of the Lord. That's right. And plotting against his saving purposes. Now that was the reason why Jesus went to the cross. To save us. He went to the cross specifically to save us. Not just Jews, but to save mankind. To save the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the part that gets to me is, the part that gets to me is, many of us have not, well, many of us, not we've gotten it, but many people have not understood what, what this was, what would actually happen. Can we continue? And now, lo, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, so blind that you will be unable to see the sun for a time, again, for a season. Instantly there fell upon him a mist and a darkness, and, and he groped about seeking persons who would lead him by the hand. I could just, I could just see, it. I could just see it in my mind. So all of a sudden, I could just see it. I can just, I can just, just in my, in my imagination, see it. Then the proconsul, the deputy, believed, became a Christian when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished and deeply touched, deeply touched at. The teaching concerning the Lord and from Him. Now, when you look at all that, you sit back and you say, even though it was an intense conflict, it was over quick. 
It was over quick. And there was no but 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 there was no excuse. It was no excuse given. It was from it was it was it. However, it wasn't the death penalty. It was just I guess you could say a, a, a it was just a, a slight jail time. <laughs> a slight jail time. A season of jail time. So anyway, anyway, uh, um, the intense conflict was um, basically uh, righteous anger that was in Paul for, uh, uh, for uh, this person who is trying to prevent the gospel from going forth. Prevent Paul and Barnabas from doing the job that the Holy Spirit gave him. And that was, that, was a, that was a big thing. You grieve in the Holy Spirit like that? No, you don't do that. You don't do that. So anyway, um, it, was, it was interesting to me that they both suffered the same penalty. Now, it'd be nice if they, if they did the same thing, if he did the same thing that Paul did afterwards. That would be really, that would be really fantastic. But anyway, that, that was the intense conflict that I had seen after, after all the study that I had done. Uh, did anybody else want to add something? Or it is, I may have, not, not may have, I probably missed a few things that other people may have caught that I didn't get. So, did anybody want us add anything? Mr. Uh, Brendan? I'm just sitting here thinking that so I thought, you know, it's good that uh, we are here today, you know, because we get a chance to go through the world. It's really for us. Our mind went back to the people that really like we have today. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said we have a moment much for that. Like, yeah. But it's like, here in the Bible, it says, Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all But that doesn't mean that the temptation isn't going to come. Right, for sure. But at least you, you'll you know where you stand. And even when that devil come at you, he'll know where he stands. And God will give you that strength. That Holy Spirit came into Paul. That wasn't Paul talking. That was the Holy Spirit in Paul. Right, right. And, you right. Know, and, and I usually think that every time an opportunity comes like that, it's not no surprise to God. 
No. It's not so no surprise that Jesus or the Holy Spirit. We're used as instruments to address things. And Paul was used as an instrument to address this um this person of a demonic spirit. Right. And it was used not just for that person who had the demonic spirit, but the person who got healed because of it. God knew that the deputy, that's what he was, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, an uh, officer, would be brought to him from what Paul had to say and what Paul brought in front of them. And, I, and even though it doesn't say anybody else, I'm just assuming that it was just not just him. Well, even if it, even if it was just him, you think he, since he he converted, don't you think that he had influence on uh, people around him? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so therefore, there was a, I guess you could say, a collateral, uh, um, co collateral. There was the other people. There was around. a bigger picture. Yeah, there were people the around Holy him Spirit, yes. that would also embrace the yes. gospel based on what this pro council deputy, whatever, said that he had witnessed mm -hmm. and, and 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 he grasped a hold of this that Jesus is the Messiah. Right. Jesus is right. the man. That's right. And, but before you came here, we were talking about the, we, I, I kind of like mentioned about the, the tools of the devil, that he was uh, very subtle. At first it was persecution. Now it's, it's still persecution. Mm -hmm. But now it's for us who are in this country, it's more or less laziness. Oh, well, you know, there's so many churches and you can do this and you can do that. And it, it's, it's, it's just, it's just his, his attacks have um, become a lot more subtle than what they had been. Very Before subtle. it used to be persecution, you know, mm -hmm. but not, persecution doesn't, doesn't really work as well as they thought, as well as he thought it was. When I, when I read this, Every time he persecuted something, they split up and they went up and they continued to spread the gospel. And it was always a way of suddenly bringing that negativity back into the forefront of the people. And when I read this in the beginning of the week, and I went through other translations and other, I, I just, I just felt to me like this person was planning to cause disruption, oh, yeah. and had been causing disruption, and that's why Paul and um, um, Barnabas. Barnabas was sent there yeah. to stop it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just thank God for His word. You yeah, know? Amen. Well, anyway, let's go to our superintendent. And I, too, thank God for his word. Because that place was, says that they had gone through the Isle of Paphos. And when you talk about that place, it talks about where they were worshiping the God called Venus, yeah. a very sexual God, you know, so... And there they landed there, so it lets us know they really did have a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. you know. But they weren't alone. The Holy, the Holy oh, Spirit dear. was with them. Yes. And that's what we have to yes. understand. Yes. When yes. we get called out, we're yes. never alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is with us. And we ended this lesson, coming to the end, it seems like talking a lot about discernment. And so I saw this scripture here in Psalms 119, uh, 130. And you don't have to turn to it because I'm not going to give you enough time because I don't have enough time. <laughs> but anyway, it says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. God's word. When his word comes into us, it gives us light. And it says also that it giveth understanding unto the simple. Mm -hmm. When we allow his word to come within us, mm -hmm. it gives us understanding. And so I just wanted to finish up just sharing something with you from our golden text, Illumination. And it, and it just reminds us that God gives discernment to people. Mm -hmm. True discernment comes from God and the reading of his word. That's where it comes from. The discernment reaches far beyond the wisdom of mankind. 
and there is no one on earth who can rival his understanding. Mm -hmm. Discernment comes from having access to godly wisdom. There are times, though, when we may feel lacking in that. We feel inadequate and do not know what to do about something. And when we experience this lack, we can ask God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to go to Him. Mm -hmm. So many times we act out on our own mm -hmm. and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But we need to ask God for wisdom. He will freely give it when we seek Him. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. He will also choose to take it away when we are able to discern His ways and yet continually choose to go mm -hmm. against Him. He expects us to use what we mm. are given. Mm. Are you feeling the need for wisdom in something? Mm. Ask God. Mm. Ask Him. Mm. When we sincerely ask Him for it through prayer, He will give it to us. And you know, that's what was happening in the congregation mm. back there. They were fasting and praying. Mm and seeking God's wisdom. That's what enabled them to send Barnabas and Saul out with their blessings. It says, what we need to do is wait on him to show us his plan. There are times when the waiting may seem to take forever, but it is always worth it when we follow his design in our lives. Remember that God is a loving Father yes. who never fails His children. Whatever we are facing this day, we can come to God and ask for discernment mm -hmm. about it. And when we make a decision, do not forget to include Him in it. See, we make decisions, we run off and leave God, but always include Him. And that's in any decisions about our home life, or about our church life, about the people we associate with, about where we're going to evangelize. Ask God, and we will be happy when we learn to put Him first. Let Him give us that discernment. Discernment is the difference between good and evil. That's discernment. That's right. Yeah, well, that's what you're Because we come in the midst of false teachers, yeah. false preachers, people putting stuff out there, people lying on us, people doing all kind of things. And we need to know when it's the work of the devil. Because he can get in anything. Mm -hmm. Trust God. And with that, I'm going to ask D to dismiss us. Amen. Amen. And Sister Dorothy, if you stand right there, would you turn like